If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hmm? No, we're not rolling yet. Hey everybody, welcome to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. That's the show where you ask me questions and I try to answer them. If you'd like a question read on this show, please email me one at thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com or you can comment below in the comments below and I will try and answer them there. Hopefully I can answer you in both places. But at any rate, I'll do my best to answer your questions. I have a wad of questions here and I'm going to do my best. Um, first of all though, to start off by talking about last week's episode or last episode of the Frugal Filmmaker, which is where I reviewed the Photodeox ND Throttle. That was a lens adapter slash uh, variable ND that goes between your interchangeable lens and your camera body. It's actually made from vintage lenses like Canon EF lenses or Nikon G lenses. I had one that was uh, using a Minolta lenses, Minolta still camera lenses. So that was my review of that kind of cool item. A little bit expensive, but I really liked it. So check out my review uh, down below in the description or an annotation hopefully will pop up. All right, so what came in the mail this week? Uh, usually I get lots of stuff in the mail from various sources and kind of gives you an idea about what's coming in the future. There was one item that I got in the mail that was not what I expected and it just wasn't up to snuff as far as quality goes. So I'm gonna send it back and get another one from a different source, uh, but I can't really talk about it. So just uh, know that something cool is coming, I think, that I think everybody will like. The other thing I got in the mail was this. This is uh, one of those little uh, thumb screws that goes into a flash bracket that I built the frugal rig out of, the frugal cage. And uh, I don't like the plastic uh, screws that come, screw knobs that come with those because the threads are plastic on this side. So if you ever want to attach anything with this quarter 20 thread right here, uh, the, this metal thread is much better. However, I did want to replace uh, one that I had because I wanted a better grip around the, uh, these knobs because I had, uh, when I put on my uh, follow focus, I just want to be able to tighten it by hand with ease. And as you can see on something like this, the ridges on the side are not very uh, grabby. So I wanted something a little better than that. And I actually ordered something better, which I thought was better because the ridges seemed very pronounced on the item that I ordered, as you will see here pictured. Uh, but instead I got this, which the ridges are obviously not what was pictured. And I, I don't know if you've ever had that experience on eBay before where you order something and it looks a certain way, but you don't get the thing you ordered. Let's jump right into the questions today. The first one is from uh, a comment on my last Q&A episode, which was what kind of editing computer. And this is from YouTuber Zoffinger, and he says, Wow, sir, I respect you and have bought, made more than one of your suggestions. Perhaps you can tell me the name of the bottle of wine you drank before shooting this video. I love a good buzz, and you seemed kind of wasted. Perhaps you're just tired. Uh, well, Zoffinger, as you can uh, see by the first part of the video, the intro here, I was drinking something. This is a IBC cream soda and uh, it's pretty tasty. I don't know if that's what gave me the buzz last week. Actually, I wasn't drinking that last week, but I'm drinking it now because you, you made a comment. So this is actually gonna help give me a little, uh, little sugar buzz because usually when I do these videos, it's very late at night. And what you saw last week was me just being very tired, probably after doing a lot of other things and then doing that video. Uh, there's some videos that I've done late at night kind of gotten me into trouble because I get sort of criticized about how I leave off certain details. Um, and it's probably just because I'm exhausted when I make those videos. So throughout this video, I'm going to be consuming this bottle of uh, IBC cream soda. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to get back to that. Okay, our next question comes from YouTuber Daniel Rudder, and he commented on another Q&A video, the What's in My Camera Bag video, and he asks, Hey Scott, just wondering if you've ever noticed how bassy your voice sounds on these videos. And you know, this is probably a result of me uh, doing a little audio sweetening in post and adding a, a little bit of bass to my voice, which clearly Daniel and others have told me I don't need to add any bass to my voice, even a little bit. So I've actually stopped doing any kind of audio sweetening. I'm just, what the sound you're hearing now is what's coming out of my uh, Radio Shack lav mic and my Zoom H1 handy recorder. I'm not doing anything to it because I'm mixing this whole show on laptop speakers, which are probably the worst possible speakers to understand any kind of bass. And so I'm just not gonna touch the sound anymore. I'll make sure it's the proper level and uh, that you can hear it. But other than that, no adjustments, so don't worry about that, Daniel. That's not going to happen anymore. Hopefully this video you're hearing now is no longer bassy. All right, uh, next question comes from uh, Will Fasty, 
who asks me, was your choice of Sony Vegas based on frugality or would you have preferred it anyway? If money was no object, which editor would you choose? And if you're not aware, Sony Vegas Pro, the current version, or Pro 12 is what I use, 13 is actually the current version, um, is my editor of choice. And it's probably because I've been using it for so long. I changed editors a long time ago when I first started editing on a program called Edit DV, and that was updated to a program called CineStream, and then they stopped doing anything with that program. So I went looking for another one, and this was a long time ago when it was, uh, when it was Vegas Video 4, or it was Vegas 4, and it's since changed to uh, Sony. Sony bought, actually, Vegas, which was owned by Sonic Foundry. And now it's Sony Vegas Pro, probably so it sounded like Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. And I'm still using it. It's kind of a dark horse. Anytime you mention I edit with Sony Vegas, like on the Facebook group, for example, everybody kind of snickers and, ch and chuckles like, you know, that's a kid's toy or something. But it's a powerful editor. You can do a lot with it. You can do a lot of compositing. Its audio tools are spectacular. So if you're doing everything in one editor, it's a really good editor for that. If, you do, if everything is self-contained, if you're cutting your movie, or your video or whatever, and you're doing you're mixing sound, you're doing simple color correction, you're doing some compositing, you can do other effects, there are some plugins and, and programs like that that will help you make it a good editor. Where it lacks is when you have to export stuff to other programs, if someone's mixing your sound or doing color correction or whatever. Sometimes there's some bumps in the road. I had that problem when I did Collection Day and I was exporting my sound to Sean Scarfo, who was doing um, the sound in Pro Tools, and sometimes the back and forth well, getting my sound to his program was quite difficult, so there's that. But I still like Sony Vegas, and I'll still use it. Our next question comes from Graydon Cochran, who asks, I am looking for an on-camera LED light to a place on my hot shoe. Any suggestions on a DIY light, light like this? I know you've done reviews on cheaper ones. How about a DIY? This is one of those questions where you have to weigh the cost of something versus the value of your time. Because you can get cheap DIY lights like at Harbor Freight Tools or Walmart. They're these kind of oval ones, oval work lights that you can uh, modify a little bit to fit onto your camera rig or rig a hot shoe to or whatever. And they only cost like 3 or $4. And to make a DIY light, light that does the same thing would cost you $10, $15. So it's not even worth it in my opinion to spend your time making a DIY anything that you can get cheaply on the internet or at your local hardware store. Okay, finally, we have a question from Avery Half or Hoff, and he asks, uh, "Will the ten-dollar budget will the ten-dollar budget ever come back? And if so, when?" The ten-dollar budget was a show I did a while ago, which was actually the sequel to a show called The One-Dollar Budget. And it was kind of a running series. I can leave you a playlist below, or go to the playlist on this channel if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, it was a show where I would take ten dollars and I would spend it on various things that I thought could be useful in filmmaking. A lot of them were cheap, a lot of them came from Dollar Tree, some of them, uh, some of them I bought online. Um, and I put them all in one show, and people seemed to like that show. The problem I had with the show, and why I kind of phased it out a little bit, was that it wasn't very searchable as far as if people were looking for various things you know, on YouTube, I wanted them to find my videos. But that video had so many different things in it that it was just, it was great for, I think, people that first saw it. But then once it had, you know, had gone into the archive, so to speak, and people would stumble across it, it really wouldn't, it was a lot harder for people to find that video. And I've actually taken things from that video and done my own videos on them. So if I have something that's kind of cool, uh, like things that I might buy that are inexpensive, like the spider gripper thing, if you remember that, that was only a couple dollars. In the past, that would have ended up in a $10 budget show. But I think those things can be so useful and interesting that I've just created their own episode around those specific things. So that's why I haven't done it since then. I sort of phased it out. However, if uh, everybody would really like that show and want, wants me to bring it back, I could probably do that if you uh, felt that you wanted to see it again. So just leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Should I bring back the $10 budget show? Or should I just keep doing specific episodes on these interesting things that I find? That's what I've been doing. So thank you for your question, Avery, and thanks everybody for the questions uh, this week and your comments. Again, if you would like a question answered on the show, please send me an email at thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That's the best way to get your question read on the show and answered on the show. Or you can leave a comment below. That's another way. Um, if you're interested in this kind of thing, frugal filmmaking, come to thefrugalfilmmaker.com. That's kind of the, that's my blog, the hub of all my content. There's also the Facebook group. Lots of people there ready to ask your, answer your questions. And find, you can find lots of deals there as well. I always post deals there when I find them on, online, especially with Christmas coming. 
be a good, good place to find things. I'm also on Twitter and this YouTube channel, of course. So really appreciate everybody watching this show and others. I hope uh, you're liking them. And there'll be a new episode this Thursday or Friday, something completely different. And then we'll be back on Monday with the Q&A. So with that being said, have a nice day.